presentation is on the history of the HIV AIDS pandemic in the United States. The pandemic began in the United States somewhere between 1978 and 1980, which signs and symptoms of what we now know to be HIV and AIDS was uh, seen in several men in the Los Angeles and New York City area. Doctor clear what the connection was between these men, but it was only afflicting men. At By 1980, there were 55 men who were diagnosed with what they were then calling immune system failure. But doctors did not know why these men were so ill. The only connection between the men was that they were all gay. On the first cases of immune deficiency syndrome, were to the Centers for Disease Control. By two, there were 471 cases of what they were calling at that time GRID, gay-related immune deficiency, and were all reported to the CDC. What happened, however, was that it was not just men, but also women and children, and that the cases were now in 24 states instead of just two. At that point, the CDC adopted the acronym AIDS, Quiet Deficiency Syndrome. In night three, HIV virus was dis was discovered in the laboratory, and there were an AIDS surveillance system developed. In 1984, hemophiliac Ryan White was diagnosed with age with AIDS at the age of 13. I recognize this man as Rock Hudson, who died from AIDS. Amer then became concerned about AIDS when a uh, famous person announced that they uh, had it and died from it. The antibody test was also developed, developed not to test individuals, but rather to screen the nation's blood supply so that other children like Ryan White did not uh, become infected. There are 1,000 Americans who are either dying from AIDS or have already died and hundreds of thousands more who are infected with HIV. In the six, ADT got FDA approval for the treatment of HIV and being used in 2010 effectively. In seven, public health service issued HIV counseling guidelines, which emphasize the role of counseling for prevention and not just education. Eight, universal precautions were established for health care workers. So this meant um, eye protection, latex gloves, and so testified at the National Commission on AIDS, telling story and asking for funding for prevention. And New York State passed the HIV confidentiality law to help with stigma so that more people would um, come out of their status. HIV testing for individuals now became available, with thousand cases of AIDS being reported across the United States. Ryan White died in his junior year of high school from patients from AIDS. His mom wrote a letter to the U.S. Senate requesting the implementation of the CARE Act, which stands for Comprehensive AIDS Resource Emergency. The care passed. C1, Magic Johnson announced that he was HIV positive. Testing rose dramatically. And there were also 200,000 of cases, 2,000 cases of AIDS reported in 1991. In 92, AIDS became the number one cause of death for men ages 25 to 44, and tennis great announced that he also had AIDS. In the three, there were studies of discordant couples. So a person is positive, one person is negative. And the study showed that condoms could be 98% effective in stopping the spread of HIV. In 94, the 076 study reported that AZT didn't reduce the risk of mother-child transmission. In 95, 
AZT uh, got some helpers, so protease inhibitors were introduced, and triple combination therapy began. So instead of fight the virus with one drug, three uh, drugs were being used in combination to help suppress the uh, HIV virus from being to AIDS so rapidly. Half a million cases of AIDS reported in the United States, and about 20% of those, 95,871, were in New York State. In 86, the first time in the pandemic, AIDS death decreased much in half, from 40,000 to 20,000 per year. But the infection rate continued to stay the same, about 40,000 per year. Nine expert newborn testing began in New York State. The transmission was at all time low. The five years of 2000, the CD estimate, CDC estimated that there were between 850 to 950, so just shy of 1 million people living with HIV or AIDS in the United States. June 2000 was a rather big year where HIV reporting and part notification services being mandated in New York State, making 33rd state to begin such reporting. Ryan Care Act was also reauthorized. In 2001, 20 years since the initial cases, 5 million Americans are at high risk for HIV. Women making about up about one third of those new infections, and half of those new infections are believed to occur in people under the age of 25. That accounts for about three quarters of those infections. 2001, the death. Torn, so the diffusion of effective behavioral interventions. This was based on 1999 CDC compendium, which uh, contained hundreds of research studies showing um, what interventions were shown to be effective. These were implemented in 2002. It's also began to shift to focus more on HIV positive individuals, so prevention for positive. And then there was also the STARS project. Today, we've lost about a half a million people from AIDS. In the United States, there's 162,446 people living with AIDS, including HIV, so all living with AIDS. Heterosexual transmission also increased from 3% in 1985 up to 1%. And there are a million people estimated to be living with HIV and AIDS, and again, just in the United States. Ten four, some testing advances happened. So the OraQuick rapid test gained FDA approval. This was for the testing of oral fluid. The test was uh, reliable to test for HIV-1 and HIV-2. In 2004, AIDS is the leading cause of death for African American women aged 25 to 34, and is the top three causes of death for African American men aged 25 to 54. We created the Global Coalition Against Women and AIDS. This represents the number of AIDS cases in the United States from 1980 to 2007. So the beginning of the pandemic in 1980, where there were very, very few cases, 55 to be exact, up to the approximate 1 million two as of 2007. The U.S. estimates as of 2005 were that 40,000 new infections per year were occurring. Probably 1 million people were living with HIV or AIDS. There were 15,000 deaths in 2005. And quarter of people with HIV infection don't know infected. One in four people. Two six. We're that still 40% of patients with HIV are not diagnosed until they have full-blown AIDS. Many of those patients are being diagnosed in emergency rooms. Symptoms of the prior HIV infection 
infection that some people are seeking treatment for mimic those of the flu. Unfortunately, people don't seek medical treatment uh, or attention because they think they have the flu and the symptoms go away. In six, some revised U.S. estimates came from the Centers for Disease Control that shows that we do not have 40,000 new infections per year, but we have 56,300. For hellos, about 53% are occurring in gay and bisexual men. The number of how many we think are living with HIV or AIDS remains about the same at 1.1 million. And the in four goes down to about one in five for people who do not know that they're positive because they have not been tested. Over a half a million cumulative deaths in the United States from HIV or AIDS. That's some good news. So September 2006, the CD released the revised recommendations for HIV testing in healthcare settings. And what these recommendations were was that HIV testing become more uh, routine and be offered by anyone um, who is providing healthcare services to uh, people in any healthcare setting. So whether it is an OYN office or a primary healthcare setting, uh, HIV testing is something that becomes um, routine and normalized. Other things that happened in 2006 was that FDA approved a test to diagnose HIV by isolating the virus. So until this point, the only HIV testing that was available was to test for antibodies. And as we know, when you're testing for antibodies, there is a window period, which in three to six months at one point, but then was really shortened down to three months or 90 days. Uh, so the um, fit to having a test that now was looking for the virus instead of the antibodies was that it greatly shortened the window period. But uh, we know that still in 2010, the test is not widely used or available at this point. So we can stop the ep epidemic. We need to really recognize the magnitude of the disease. AIDS is still a real threat across, across the United States. Uh, even though there are treatments to help people with HIV live longer than before, AIDS is still a significant health issue. So being medications, um, are kind of as heavy uh, duty as uh, the one that a person needs to take if they're infected with HIV um, really can do a lot of damage to the liver and some of the organs um, if they're over a long period of time. I don't have a cure. So, you know, despite the new therapies, people can live longer, um, but people that have HIV, it can still develop into AIDS. There are people in the United States who have been diagnosed with AIDS, and 14,000 and people with AIDS will die each year in the United States. So we came out with a campaign called Half Minutes that said every nine and a half minutes somebody becomes newly infected with HIV. Those people who have not had HIV AIDS affect their lives yet. It's really only a matter of time before it will. So then feel helpless about this. What can you do? What can individuals do to make a difference? Everyone can get tested for HIV and encourage their family, friends, partners to do the same. So in status is uh, really half the battle. Getting educated of HIV and educating others, becoming role models. For vaccine study trials, we are making some headway in that um, area. Um, always looking for more uh, study vaccine Vaccine study participants. And you become an advocate um, for the US government to uh, make funds available and, and make um, make sure that will improve the health care and support uh, testing for HIV. The picture that was taken in Washington, uh, which is not a really clear picture, but it does kind of show you the magnitude. Each star represents a person um, who was a mother or a brother or a son or a daughter um, to a lot of people. And each square represents a person's life. 